No. Good evening. The Wyzetta Public Schools Board of Education regular meeting for Monday, February 12th will please come to order. <coughs> Madam Clerk, can you call the roll? Yes. Eric Brown. Here. Linda Cohen. Here. Andrea Keene. Here. Benita Lucky. Here. Chris McCullough. Here. Cheryl Polzine here. Chair Johansson. Here. And Dr. Anderson. Here. All here. All right. Well, and our first item of business is to approve the, con the agenda and the consent agenda items. Consent agenda items are considered to be routine in nature and will be enacted by one motion. There will be no separate discussion of these items unless a board member or citizen so requests, in which event the item will be removed as a consent agenda item and addressed. The consent agenda items are listed in the materials, and the recommended action is to approve the agenda and the consent agenda items. Is there a motion? So moved. Second. All right. Discussion? And I think it's a roll call. Yes. Chris McCullough? Yes. Cheryl Polzine? Yes. Eric Brown? Yes. Linda Cohen? Yes. Andrea Keene? Yes. Bonita Lucky? Yes. And Chair Johansson? Yes. Yes. All right, and we have an agenda. Um, the next item on our agenda are reports from organizations, and this is usually the time that we welcome our school board representative. I think there's a lot going on at the high school and, and with hockey, and so he is unable to make it tonight, but we will look forward to seeing him and hearing all about the events at the high school next week. Um, so that brings us to one of the best parts of the evening, which is recognitions. I'll turn it over to Dr. Anderson. Good evening, everybody, and welcome. Thank you for being here tonight. My name is Chase Anderson. I'm the superintendent for the school district, and it's always my honor to convene the recognitions portion of our program. And uh, we'll begin that uh, here shortly, but I'd like to first thank you for coming out on this chilly night to uh, recognize our staff and to be a part of uh, this special uh, event tonight. So thank you for being here. Our first recognition tonight is uh, it's our tradition at each one of our regular school board meetings to announce the names of those who have indicated their intent to retire uh, since the, the previous school board meeting. And we have a number of those folks on our list tonight. Um, I don't think we have any of our retirees here as I glance over the uh, group that's here, but I'm sure they're tuned in watching us live on television at home as I speak. So we will uh, give them a collective round of applause after I've read all their names. And they are the following. Margaret Hanrahan, West Middle School Culinary Express, 20 years. Judy Hansen, High School Chemical Health Coordinator, 21 years. Gail Hannes, High School Culinary Express, 20 years. Susan Hatch, Oakwood teacher, 37 years. Lisa Landry, Early Learning School, Peppermint Fence Manager, 21 years. Joanne Lorenzini, high school paraprofessional, 21 years. Heidi Martin, Birchview teacher, 35 years. Michelle Poole, Kimberly Lane teacher, 13 years. John Richardson, high school custodian, 12 years. Jed Sherman, East Middle School, custodian, 32 years. Sherry Strelo Lundblad, Kimberly Lane teacher, 20 years. Janet Strobel, Early Learning School and ECFE teacher, 14 years. And Patricia Warfield, East Middle School, paraprofessional, 16 years. If you could give them a round of applause, please. And I would like to just take a moment to thank them for all of their service to the school district over the years. Uh, their, even though uh, their time is winding down with us, uh, their contributions and the work that they've done uh, will continue with us for years into the future and continue to help us achieve that high mark of excellence. So thanks to all of those folks. And next, it's our February Employee of the Month recognition, and I would like to invite Amy Schmidt forward, please. Amy, congratulations. I'd like to share uh, the comments that were provided to us on her behalf. It's quite lengthy, so settle in. There's a lot to tell <laughs> about Amy. Sunset Hill is pleased to announce Amy Schmidt as Wyzetta Public Schools February Employee of the Month. 
Amy is a valuable member of our staff in many ways and goes above and beyond in making sure that students' needs are being met so that they are able to grow positively in school and beyond. This requires Amy to think outside of the box and to be extremely flexible. She often makes home visits to assist families in understanding paperwork required for assessments. She coordinates the Sheridan Story efforts in the building and devotes time to staying connected with the larger community. If a student or family is needing resources beyond her scope or that of the schools, Amy knows who to contact. Amy has worked to build our Giving Tree program, which generates additional funds for families in need through the anonymous support of other families at Sunset Hill. She has coordinated meals for families during the holiday season and, frankly, whenever the need arises. She has worked on weekends and late evenings to make house wellness calls when others share concerns. It doesn't matter what time of the day it is, Amy is focused on her students' well-being and makes sure that follow-up occurs. She coordinates transportation for parents to be able to attend conferences or get to events that they would otherwise miss. Amy is a member of our building leadership team, child study team, problem solving team, emergency planning team, and has been a huge resource in our building's work implementing restitution. As a skilled expert in helping students develop effective social and communication skills, she will often work tirelessly with students to help them solve problems with peers. Amy is not afraid to have honest but challenging conversations in her role as she advocates for students. This would include her interaction and work with staff and parents. The thing about Amy is that she is truly genuine and any comment and decision made by her comes from the heart and with the best of intentions as someone willing to help anyone. Amy can be seen each morning greeting students in the hallway and engaging them in conversation. She sees multiple student groups throughout the day as she plays a large role in helping them develop the skills required to be great friends and people. So much of school and life is about respecting others and self and her focused efforts play a huge role in giving students these tools. Amy and her knowledge around student mental health is a resource that we value tremendously. We are proud to have her on our team and grateful to nominate her for this recognition. Amy, congratulations. I am humbled to be chosen by my colleagues at Sunset Hill as Employee of the Month. The role of a social worker in a primarily academic institution can be hard for people to understand. So I'd like to tell you about some of my experiences just from last week. I spoke to a parent who has limited food and no transportation to get to a food shelf. A fifth grade girl stood at my door with tears streaming down her face because she's grieving the recent loss of her father. I talked to a first grade girl who cannot concentrate because she's up at night listening to her parents argue through the walls and is worried that she's gonna have to move. I talked to a second grade boy who's been making gun gestures with his fingers, pointing to his own head and saying he wants to die. I wish I could tell you that these examples are exaggerated or uncommon, but the truth is that these are typical occurrences in my day. I became a social worker because I have a passion for working with children and families and for making our world full of hardship and mental health challenges just a little better each day. I'm truly thankful to be working in a school district that acknowledges and values the importance of mental health supports and social emotional learning in our schools. Without that foundation, optimal learning cannot take place. I would like to thank the three principals that I have worked under, Dennis Grasmick, Karen Keffler, and Ross Williams, who have all guided and supported me as I advocate for the needs of students and families over the past 13 years. I would like to thank my social work colleagues for their ongoing support during our monthly consultations, quick phone consults during the day, and sometimes after hour conversations. And lastly, I'd like to thank the fabulous staff at Sunset Hill who work endlessly and creatively to do whatever it takes to help children grow and learn. I know that I'm only a small little part of the big true picture of Sunset Hill. Thank you again for this recognition.
That concludes our recognition program. And as I always announce, uh, you're all more than welcome to stay if you'd like. But uh, if you have other things that you need to move on to, we're uh, moving on to the rest of our agenda. But thanks again so much. And Amy, congratulations. And again, to our retirees, we uh, greatly appreciate their contributions. Thank you. And I see that Dr. Johnson is up at the podium teeing things up as she always does. The next item on our agenda um, is another one of our highlights as a school board each meeting, um, and that is our student curriculum presentation. And I think Dr. Johnson will introduce, but we'll be welcoming the Meadow Ridge team. So thanks so much for being here. Great, thank you, Madam Chair, members of the board, Superintendent Anderson, good evening. Our site presentation comes from our newest elementary, uh, Meadow Ridge up there in the northwest corner. And uh, just to, to remind you of the alignment, um, in other words, how are we, uh, what is our practice around the strategic roadmap uh, that we're engaged in to uh, achieve the mission, vision, and strategic, strategic directions as you have uh, defined them. Mm -hmm. Tonight's presentation is gonna come from that uh, um, area of the student learning experience and specifically around the concept of how to extend learning beyond the school day or the school walls. So um, I will introduce to you the great principal of the Meadow Ridge Cardinal, Miss <laughs> um, Karen Keffler, and she will introduce her team. I think I can get you teed up really quick. Maybe. Well, you might have to be from here, Karen. Madam Chair, members of the board, Dr. Anderson, thank you so much for having us here tonight. We are excited to talk about um, some programs that we have at Meadow Ridge. Um, it's moving down here, but not up there. They're way too... There we go. All right. Thank you, Elizabeth. Okay. Uh, I'd like to introduce the team who is here this evening. Ashley Farrington, who is our student support specialist. He's going to talk a little bit about his new role this year. Gabby Greer, who is with Interfaith Outreach Community Partners, um, who will talk about Homework Club when we highlight that. And teachers Rhonda Jessvang and Ann Katzmerich, who have been instrumental in helping to build that community outside the school day. So year two, uh, we are inspired, we are compassionate, we are forever learners, we are Meadow Ridge. And the second year, we decided that we still needed to focus on building student community um, in year two. We had a survey in the spring, and part of that student survey was um, these four questions. Do you like Meadow Ridge Elementary? 95% of them like elementary, which is great, but yet, only 87, 87.5% like being there. So <laughs> they like the idea? I don't know. Um, and uh, and uh, other, um, two other questions that really warmed our hearts was, are the, uh, are the students friendly? 94%. And do the grown-ups care about you? 97%. And we decided that we really wanted to focus on that friendly and do you like being at school? And we're going to talk about a couple of things that we have done to hopefully build on that high percentage. I'll also give you a construction update. Things are coming along very well. It's, it's always exciting to see what's happening. 
Uh, one thing that we decided to do this year to build that student community is we developed mixer families. And we are meeting as Meadow Ridge Mixer Families about once a month. It is a K-5 vertical family. Um, we have 60 adults in the building, so teachers, paras, some office staff who meet with small groups, 14 students, and we do community builders. We um, talk about getting to know you and um, getting to know each other and what it really means to be a Meadow Ridge Cardinal. We've had some pretty fantastic responses from both students and staff. Um, the staff who aren't teachers in the classrooms are really um, proud to be leading some of those groups. They're having a lot of fun as well as the classroom teachers. And uh, we've already started talking about, so next year when we do this, do we keep our family and welcome new kindergartners? Do we mix it up again? How do we do that? So we're starting those conversations. Um, and we are just really pleased um, that uh, that's going so well. One, th uh, one of the activities that we did um, in February, or no, right before our international night, was to highlight even though we are all different, we are one community and all of those differences make us just a richer place to be. And these are um, just a few of the posters. We have 60 posters around the building. They each designed a handprint and each of the adults picked a quote that resonated with them and we talked about that and had a little craft and so those are really fun to see. Another big part of building that community is our new student support specialist. So Mr. Farrington will now talk a little bit about his new role. Well, good afternoon and thanks for having us here. Um, and first of all, thank you guys for supporting this new role. Um, I was really lucky to be able to be a part of, be one of the members of the student support specialist. And I think it's been a really, really, really positive thing, not only at Meta Ridge, but at all the elementary schools. Um, briefly, this kind of describes um, the role that I have, how we make it look at Meta Ridge. Um, but the biggest part of it is just building and connecting with students and families and really trying to make sure that students feel like they have another person that they can come to um, and providing support for teachers as well. So it's kind of threefold. We started more mostly, obviously, the most important part, student family support. Um, and my role involves providing academic and behavior support to students, um, daily student check-in, connecting with families, um, and coordinating various programs to support student needs. Um, I work with our academic intervention team and making sure our students are getting what they need. Um, so that's been really good. Teacher support as well, um, providing teacher support with students and developing whether it's academic plans or behavior plans. One part of our building goal is um, putting students on acceleration plans to make sure they're reaching those um, academic places that we want them to go. And so um, working with teams to make sure those students have acceleration plans and facilitating assessments and again the behavior piece as well. Um, and then general school support just providing the day-to-day -day administration support to Ms. Kaffler and so that she can be awesome like we know she is. Um, <laughs> establish different student activities, work with the PTO, um, assist with any of the opera operational things, and then the most fun part is being starting some new things with our targeted services, um, bus patrol, a new, we also started Boys to Men in our school, and Boys to Men is a group for third through fifth graders, students of color, and I meet with them myself um, during lunch times, and we have conversations and give them another spot where they can feel safe um, to have those conversations, and it's been a lot of joy to do that. Um, homework club working with Gabby who is going to be talking to you here in a few minutes but being able to have that connection and making sure they're getting what they need at homework club because that's a big part of our program at Meadow Ridge as well so again just thank you so much for supporting this it's been really 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 a good thing and we're excited that it's going to continue in the future going back about two and a half years when we really started talking about building that community at Meadow Ridge. Uh, Ann Katzmerick, uh, fourth grade teacher, um, came up with the idea of meeting students even before the school year started. So she started a bookmobile where we went to Vicksburg Commons and Westview Estates. We brought books to the students to check out. We made those connections. They got to meet some of the new teachers just to see those familiar faces before they actually walked into the building. And we had some 
both last summer and the summer before, we had some really great turnout, and it was just super cool to see those kids every week and um, read some stories and have some fun. Do you want to add to that at all? Yeah. And um, Homer Club, is, uh, we'll have Gabby talk a little bit more about that, but that's a cooperation with um, IOCP, and we have really worked as a staff to try and be more involved in that, and so I'll have Gabby talk a little bit about that to start off. All right, good evening. So um, first I just would say that Homer Club, although it's its own program underneath the hub of Interfaith Outreach, the wonderful thing about it is the partnership with the school district and specifically with Meadow Ridge. Um, most times, Homework Club is the first touch point for me to, for us to get in contact with families and really to be able to provide um, a vast number of resources and opportunities for them. So um, a big part of my role is that I office inside of the neighborhood. So parents come, they drop their kids off, they see me, and it's a, la it's a very relaxed and um, just comforting place for par parents to feel like they can talk not only about their, their students' academic needs, but also their needs for their family. Um, and I'm, that wouldn't be possible without the partnership with Metal Ridge and Karen really allowing um, teachers to um, get information on the importance of it and my role with inside of, uh, inside of Interfaith, but then also with Homework Club. So up here, just a few stats just about um, who we reach, how many we reach, and um, the outcomes. So Homework Club is, is been around since 2006, um, and we are inside of nine of our affordable housing sites within YZ, Plymouth, and Orno. And we, it shows just simply last year, 112 parents said, yep, our kids need academic support and we might not know how to do that. And then 164 students within the side of the district were enrolled in the Homework Club and Great Readers, which is a literacy program that Rhonda Jetsfang also helped facilitate last year. And then 108 students consistently completed their homework each year. So these are great numbers, not only for the district, but also for our families. Um, and I already talked a little bit about it, but a little bit about my role is that I um, have on-site after-school programming and summer programming as well. And then a big part is developing relationships with families and community members. So a lot of partnerships, a lot of relationships um, for families. Um, yeah, and then the last part is really just connecting families to resources. And most of that, most of the time, it's connecting them to resources to support their kids. So you name it, if you can think of an activity or sports, I have figured out a scholarship or a way for someone to be involved. So um, that's a big, big part of my role. And um, yeah, I'm super glad to be able to partner with Meadow Ridge this way. Rhonda, before we play the video, would you like to come up and talk a little bit about your experiences with Homework Club and Great Readers? I've been there for the last two years. Um, I go over and I am working with readers. I've brought some iPads. We do reading A to Z. We find books for them. Um, the kids are reading together. Uh, we will do some writing activities. We did a little survey on the Olympics, what they did, what they knew about the Olympics, bringing in different things that the kids are interested in that's going on in the world. And the kids seem to really enjoy it. All right, and now before we continue with um, the PowerPoint, we, I would like to present the homework club in their, from the students in their own words. Oh, do we have audio? Try 
something else here. yourself and then they ask you how you're feeling and then you can do any emotion and it's really fun and then you do homework but sometimes you get to have parties like Valentine's Day parties and stuff like that. I like about home what I like about homework club is reading and playing games. What I like about homework club is that they help me with my math homework and I could get it done on time. I like that we can play games and we and learn. I like homework club because if you read the most, you get to go somewhere. And I like homework club because usually homework is boring, but when people help us, it kind of gets fun. Because I like to eat a snack. <laughs> Helps you at homework club. Mrs. Jesswing. Is Mrs. Jesswing your teacher at school too? Yes. Here's my piece to... Um, that no bullies come here and, um, that I get to be a helper sometimes and I like the fact that Meadow Ridge teachers and my principal gets to come over to homework club. So, what well, things I like about homework club is that it's something like that the whole, like, neighborhood like over here could go to if they sign up and it helps you out with your homework and it's, it's like a good thing to come to if you if you don't understand your homework And that little guy was my assistant producer on this. <laughs> <laughs> so, super guy. All right. Um, and just like um, the students were saying, it really is a place where they can go and be themselves and have a good time and get the assistance um, that they need on homework and get to know each other. And it's just an absolutely wonderful program. And I thank Gabby for building it into what it really is today. Uh, next, building the building. Um, we are um, under construction, those 10 classrooms. It's on schedule. Okay. These are the latest and greatest pictures. Um, so these two pictures are of the upper floor, and the picture that is on your left, um, if you're in the building, they have closed off those beautiful windows, and that is looking at that temporary wall that's there. So you can see they've broken through it, and uh, they'll start constructing. Once the floor hardens, they'll start putting in the steel framing and the drywall on the upper level. Downstairs is really coming along. Um, I had flashbacks from the building of Meadow Ridge because it looks exactly like the resource areas that were um, being constructed during that time. You can see the flexible walls, uh, the frames on the upper left, the presenta presentation area in the right, and the lower, what you're looking at will eventually be a bathroom, 
and that window is looking into Mr. Roberts' learning area where that is right now, so from the outside looking in. Um, and the, the teachers and the students, um, everybody has just been so flexible and great, and they're really excited to be able to move into this space over the summer. So thank you very much for um, listening to our presentation and for giving us the opportunity to do what we do. We really appreciate it. All right. Well, thank you so much for doing all that you do, each one of you every day. We greatly appreciate it. Now is the time to open up to our board colleagues for questions and comments. Cheryl. A question. Thank you for being here and explaining all this. Sounds like a lot of exciting things going on at Meadow Ridge. I was curious about the mixer families that you were talking about. How how often do they meet and for how long and how big are the groups? I, I take it that each teacher and the paraprofessionals and all the adults in the building each have a group. So how often do they meet, etc.? We meet just about once a month and we meet for 30 minutes. We adjusted the specialist schedule so they really don't lose any specialist time. We just start later on in the morning and they're 55 minutes instead of 50 minutes. So everybody has that opportunity to go through their day and see their specialists. Uh, so the next time we meet, I believe, is next Wednesday, next 21st. February 21st. Wednesday. Okay. And how big are the groups? Uh, right about 14, 13 or 14 students. Okay, and it's a mixture of grades. K-5, so we have about, well, two kindergartners, two first graders, two or three second graders, yeah. Okay. And the, the way we started it was the fourth and fifth graders went down and picked up the kindergarten and first graders, and we figured the second and third graders could find their way, and they did. And But that really makes that connection, too, that um, you'll see, oh, I saw my f fifth grade buddy from my family today, and... So that's, they are making those connections and that's what we wanted. Okay, thank you. Okay, thanks. Linda. Thanks so much for all you do. The programs sound wonderful. Uh, I'm particularly interested in the homework club um, and it sounds as though it's evolved beautifully. Uh, how often, I mean, is that something available three days a week after school or um, how, how often is that available to students and at Meadow Ridge, it's two times a week, so Mondays and Wednesdays from 3 to 4.30. If we do special events or we go on field trips, we might extend the time till 6 or 7. Um, so the kids come every day, they eat snack, they get lots of food, um, which is a plus. <laughs> yeah. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Thanks. Andrea. So I think that 97% of kids feel like the grown-ups care about them is just something to be so proud of. And I'm sure a lot of that has to do with time at school, but then also time outside of school. I'm kind of curious, um, the partnership is fantastic. I know you have some interfaith volunteers. How many teachers or staff people from Meadow Ridge actually volunteer at the Neighborhood Homework Club? So there are a total of nine teachers who come, uh, approximately three to five teachers every, every Monday and Wednesday. Oh. Rhonda did this wonderful job where she created a sign-up genie and, parent, oh. and teachers basically just rotate through. And then there are a consistent number of teachers who show up. Um, but the social worker comes occasionally. So it's a, on average, I would say three to five every Monday, Wednesday. That's great. Yeah. Anita. Thank you all. I thought that the presentation was great. I'm uh, particularly interested in uh, just hearing a little bit more about the uh, boys to men. Uh, so you facilitate that. And then if, if there are some ongoing concerns or discussions uh, when the child is home, how do you help educate the parent to continue the conversation or at least bring it back to you? What does that look like? I wouldn't say we've gotten to that point yet, but that's okay. a good point. Um, we just started about a few weeks ago. Um, I think one of the biggest or most powerful things that I've realized is just um, that I know personally I struggled with as myself, being able to like really express myself in a way that I wanted to about real life issues. Um, and we had, um, we had our first meeting last week and they were doing the same thing. Mm -hmm. And so I think that's the next step is, that, okay, do you want to continue this conversation at home? I know. Gabby has a lot of these conversations at Homer Club as well with these kids as well, and that's a safe spot for them to have that. So we're happy to be able to do that. But I think involving the families would be our next step to do to go. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thanks, 
Chris. I guess if you wait long enough, everybody takes the question that you had. So thank you for asking all the questions I was going to ask. Thank you, uh, Karen. Really appreciate your work and your team's work at Meadow Ridge. So that's all I had. All right. Well, I think it's so great that you get to go to the homework clubs as principals and teachers and so that they welcome you. And that was super cute when they said that. And, and it clearly, in the voices of the students, we saw that 97% of the grown-ups care about us. Thank you for everything that you do during the school day and beyond and for being here tonight. And moving on to superintendent's reports and recommendations. And um, the only thing in our reports tonight, Dr. Anderson, I think are a couple business and finance. Um, that's correct. There are two items. Uh, the first one is uh, the monthly financial reports. And I'm uh, convening these two uh, agenda items given the fact that Mr. Westrom is uh, not in attendance tonight. So I will try to sound like Mr. Westrom in announcing the following, <laughs> that enclosed for school board review and information are the following financial reports as of December 2017. And there are five reports. I believe you get these uh, each month in Mr. Westrom's report. They include the student activity fund report, investment summary, analysis of financial reports, statement of revenues, and statement of expenditures. And those are included in the board packet for your review. There's no board action required for any of those reports, but it gives you a monthly uh, uh, snapshot, if you will, of uh, the financial status of the school district. Okay. Thank you. Are there any questions? We're used to this. All right. Thank you. And moving on to uh, item number two is uh, titled Guiding Principles of Attendance Area Reconfiguration. And as the board will recall and uh, staff that were in attendance at our recent uh, school board work session, we spoke about uh, some draft uh, points in regard to our upcoming uh, attendance and reconfiguration as the board's well aware and our staff and many viewers in the community. Uh, we will be building a new elementary school to be opened in the fall of 2019. And uh, prior to that time, we'll need to work through a process that will assign students to that building and uh, uh, move students from current buildings to uh, other buildings. So that's the, the process that uh, we'll be working on. And I'll have a few comments to share. We also have an attendance with us tonight, uh, Kristen Tallison, who's our director of administrative services and who's been at the point of uh, a lot of this work and she's not new to this work having guided us uh, through uh, a few of these uh, processes uh, in the past uh, so she provided me with some information that I could share but I might just invite her if she would to the podium to uh, share a little bit about the the process uh, thus far and the guiding principles which is what uh, uh, we're asking you to take action on tonight and they are included after uh, inputs collected from school board members at the work session and um, uh, some follow-up work so we appreciate Kristen's work with that and I have uh, a summary here of the talking points if you happen to not bring those with or I would I, imagine you I can wing it. I have them in my head. I'm sure you do. <laughs> um, but the guiding principles, if there's any direct questions about those, I might ask you for okay. the exact verbiage we settled sure. on. But thank you. Good evening, um, everyone, this evening. Um, we are very fortunate that we had almost 100 applications. Um, it is pretty impressive in our community that 100 people are willing to give up their time and their expertise in what can be kind of an emotional, difficult um, um, process but we did we worked very hard in reviewing the applications um, to find a nice uh, cross-section of our community so we have um, at least two representatives from each uh, school boundary area some of those folks are new to our community some are long-standing members um, we also included two early childhood families 
um, or two, two representatives that will be specifically kind of representing our preschoolers. But many of the families that chose um, can have two and three children in our district, which again makes it even more impressive they're willing to give up. Maybe they just want to be out of their house for three Thursdays in a row. But it's a pretty impressive to want to um, give of your time when you have multiple kiddos at home. So we have about a committee of about 24. Um, we have a nice balance of gender, as I said, new and old to our community. Um, we have about four folks that have served on our boundary or our growth task force in the past. So they bring some history um, to the committee. And then we have about 20 new members that will bring a fresh perspective. Unfortunately, as you can tell, we couldn't accept everyone, so we did have to, you know, ask or decline the offer of a, about 75 people, which, you know, no lack of skill or talent by any of those people. Anyone that um, we weren't able to take on the committee um, was just a matter of trying to get a nice balance. So um, with that, the committee will begin their work in March. Um, uh, David Lutz and um, Kari Weirman and Jill jo Dr. Jill Johnson will serve as um, representatives of the teaching and learning to help share that perspective. Rich Enga, who works with our transportation contractor, and um, John Deutsch will provide operational expertise. And then Jill Schwent, Melissa Lahr, and of course Jim Westrom and myself will kind of steer the ship and, and work, in, work with some of the groups. So I'm happy to answer any questions. Um, I think you have the guiding principles that we reviewed um, a week or two ago, and we made a couple of fine-tune fine -tune, um, wording to it. Uh, very similar to what we did the last time with some learning attached to it. I might just build on that uh, sure. and just share what's uh, in the, on the agenda sheet in the board packet that, uh, as Kristen indicated, the guiding principles of attendance area reconfiguration and the district strategic roadmap are included in the board packet this evening. School boundaries should be designed to effectively utilize our facilities and meet our growing population. These guiding principles serve as a compass for decision making. Not all of the guiding principles may be possible to achieve in every situation and at times may be in conflict with uh, one another and we've found that uh, in previous processes when we've worked through this but in the event that that type of a conflict occurs we rely on our strategic roadmap to provide us some guidance as much as possible in our decision making process and a copy of our strategic roadmap is included as well uh, on uh, or within the uh, packet are those nine guiding principles I'll probably come short of reading through each and every one of those unless called upon to do so or if a board member would like to uh, do that feel free but they are included in the packet in their entirety entirety for any citizens or viewers who may be interested in in reviewing those so and I would like to uh, just take this opportunity again to thank Kristen for her work on this and uh, the experience that she brings to the school district in this regard and uh, she handles it uh, with seeming ease when yes, she works you. through this so thank you for your your energy and and commitment Thank you very much, and we look forward to it. They have already been emailing back and forth with committee members today, and again, uh, just very grateful that we have 24 people that are willing to spend a lot of time together digging in in such exciting things as transportation, routing, and building capacities. So thank you all. Okay. Well, why don't you stick around here for just a second. Um, the recommended action is to approve the following guiding principles, or the aforementioned guiding principles as for the boundary and attendance area reconfiguration as obtained in your, as in your packet. Is there a motion to that effect? So moved. Second. Second. All right, it's been moved and seconded. Now we've had Ms. Tollison staying up there for discussion and questions. Any discussion, comments, or questions? Chris. Uh, thanks, Kristen, for all your work and all the future work that you'll <laughs> likely do. Um, I know this was in our work session discussion, but can you just give a quick outline of what the schedule is over the next couple months in terms of the Boundary Task Force will meet, and at some point we'll see a, an administrative recommendation? Just generally, can you kind of... Scope that out. Thanks. Yes. Um, process that we have used in the past that has worked very well is we really want to empower the committee members with knowledge. So we will spend, we'll um, start meeting in early March. We will, as I jokingly said, we will learn about how transportation routes um, route students. We will talk about how many students can fit in a building, should fit in a building. We will be talking with our city planners and talking about the growth that we can expect. Um, some of those are hard and fast kinds of numbers and information, and some of those are a perspective that we'll share that they'll take into account. 
Um, we work with a, um, a program, a GIS or a geographical information system called Guide K-12. It's very flexible. It will, so we will break up the team likely into three groups and they will actually get hands on um, moving neighborhoods around and watching how that reflects in um, you know, our capacity, our long term, um, how that will, will allow things to do. You know, it's kind of a little puzzle and it seems very, seems like it should be very simple and it can take well, as you know, it can take a whole group of 24 people two months to work on it. But we will um, break up into three teams and they will do some scenario developing and then we'll come together to kind of reconcile and come up with hopefully um, our best scenario that we will bring to the board, um, hopefully to by the end of April. Uh, we'd like to have this to the board um, for sure by the end of the school year, if not sooner, for a final decision. Um, we are a year in advance, and there's one luxury that um, we have, and, and it's very nice because then all of next school year, our schools can be planning any type, types of transition programs or getting kids ready, and it also allows the new school to start building their community and their PTA and help parents know that they're on that team and not part of that school to help you know, hire new staff or any of those types of onboarding activities. So thank you for asking. Excellent. Thanks. Any other questions? No. Okay. Um, well, so the the, mo the motion has been moved and seconded, and I don't think this is a roll call vote, right? So, all in favor of approving the the attached guiding principles of attendance area boundary reconfiguration, please say aye. 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 Opposed? No. Abstention. All right. Motion carries. Thank you. I would like to thank you again, and thank you to um, all 100 um, roughly members of our community that, that stepped up to want to be part of it, and to the 24 that were chosen. Our journey begins, and thanks in advance for the hard work. Thank you. Mm -hmm. All right. All right. And next, that, that uh, wraps up our, our superintendent reports, and next we move on to other board action, um, and we do have a couple of items on um, our agenda. The first item on our agenda under other board action is school board compensation for 2018. And um, in accordance with the school board policy 220, school board member compensation and information from the Minnesota School Boards Association, otherwise known as MSBA, it is recommended that for 2018, the Wayzata Board of Education be compensated at the following annual rates. For a school board director, it's $4,700 annually, which is an increase from the current annual rate of 4,320. Uh, for the school board chair, the compensation would be 5500 which is an increase from the current annual rate of $5,100. Uh, we will have discussion um, attached or attached in your packet is an analysis of MSBA Director District 4 compensation rates for school board officers and their annual compensation for 2018. So the recommended action is to approve school board member compensation for 2018. Is there a motion to that effect? I so move. Second. Second. All right, it's been moved and seconded. Is there any discussion? All right, Mr. Brown. Just a, a couple comments here. We, we have shared the compensation with CFAC. Uh, the Finance Committee, we've all discussed this at length in our last work session and our annual planning. And uh, thanks to Jim Western for gathering information, uh, who's not here tonight, but thank you, Jim and his team. Uh, the um, proposal that's being presented tonight uh, is conservative and in line with the, the board's um, approach to have a conservative number uh, to not be aggressive in any way in this area. And uh, should the recommendation pass, uh, we intend to take this to the policy committee and kind of finalize the process going forward to streamline the compensation. Right. Thanks. Thank you. Any other discussion? Well, thank you, Mr. Brown, who is also our treasurer, for helping to spearhead this. Just a point of clarification and process. For those of you who are familiar with our board process, you may recall that this is typically an item that is done at our organizational meeting in January. However, as Mr. Brown noted, um, it was this year that we really wanted to take a, take a step back and do some consideration and have time to consult with our Citizens, Advisory, Citizens Finance Advisory Council, otherwise known as CFAC, and then have some discussions at the work session. 
Um, also, as Mr. Brown noted, we will uh, go back to, this will come back to finance and policy just to formalize and update some of our, our policies and standard operating procedures recommended to that. I too would like to um, reiterate what Mr. Brown said around the conservative nature. This increase is not retroactive, um, and so it will take place immediately. And um, it's significant to note that we are committed to keeping as much money as possible in the classroom and exercising extreme fiscal prudence in this issue. However, the, there are costs associated with board service, and as we have elections every two years, we do not want that to be a barrier for any citizen who is considering a run for the board. We, um, we think being a member of the school board is a privilege and a significant time commitment, and the compensation is one way that we acknowledge that. So thank you again to Mr. Westrom, who's not here. Thank you to Mr. Brown and to our Citizens Finance Advisory Council for um, weighing in on this issue. And seeing no further discussion, uh, I think it's a roll call. Yes. <clears throat> Cheryl Polzine, yes. Eric Brown. Yes. Linda Cohen. Yes. Andrea Keene. Yes. Bonita Lucky. Yes. Chris McCullough. Yes. And Chair Joe Hansen. Yes. All right. All right, the motion carries. Thank you very much. The next item under other board action is to authorize the holding of school board regular meetings on Columbus Day. Christopher Columbus Day is not observed as a holiday in Wyzetta Public Schools. School is in session and all school and administrative offices are open. While Minnesota statutes list Christopher Columbus Day as a holiday, it also provides political subdivisions with the option to, to conduct public business by taking specific action. It is recommended the school board take action to authorize the holding of school board meetings on Christopher Columbus Day, and this action will remain in effect until revoked. So the recommended action is to declare that Christopher Columbus Day is not an observed holiday in the Wyzetta Public Schools, and that public business may be conducted, and that we authorize holding school board meetings on Christopher Columbus Day, and that this declaration and authorization will remain in effect until revoked. Is there a motion to that effect? I so move. Second. All right, it's been moved and seconded. Any discussion? All in favor of the recommended action, please say aye. 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 Opposed, no. Extensions, motion carries. All right, so now we will um, have, not have to worry about that <laughs> moving forward. The next item um, in, on our agenda is uh, our board reports. And do we have any board reports tonight? All right, Mr. Brown. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. I'd like to give a short update on some of the committees and appointments that I'm working with in 2018. Uh, the Finance and Business Committee, as well as the Citizens Financial Advisory Council, or CFAC, have been uh, very focused on the bond issuance, which was recently completed. Um, another thank you to the finance and business team uh, for our AAA rating again and a successful bond issuance. Uh, the next CFAC meeting is February 20th, and I'd like to thank all the CFAC members out there for their continued service. Their financial insights help the district continue its strong financial position. Uh, custodial negotiation meetings have been scheduled, so looking forward to that. A uh, special thank you to Andrea for filling in when I'm not able to. So thank you. Um, I'd like to thank the bargaining unit in advance. Uh, we had a successful negotiation the last time around and look forward to a, a great process this time as well. Um, the Wyzetta Education Fund recently received over 25 grant applications from teachers and staff throughout the district. Uh, they're currently in the review process and looking to give generously to the district this spring. Um, there's some pretty amazing grants that are out there, so that'll be uh, fun to share once those are ready and, and processed. Uh, again, thank you to the Education Fund. They're a group of volunteers throughout the district and they do a lot for the schools. So, so thank you. All right. Thank you so much. It's always good to get a little update about what is going on. Are there any other board reports? I have just one quick board report, and it's actually a thank you. Um, a lot of what we do on a daily basis, and certainly at this meeting, has to do with our fantastic administrative assistants who keep us moving and running. And we have um, our administrative assistant, Ashley Winter, has been on maternity leave, and Elizabeth Seitz has stepped in to help us. You see her sometimes flying over to the microphone to quick fix whatever it is that we need to help her fix. And so this is her last regular board meeting with us as our full-time administrative assistant and I just wanted to take this moment to give her a little round of applause and to say thank you very much for all that you've done.
I just want to say what a pleasure and a privilege it has been working with everyone in this district. Thank you for the opportunity. All right. Thank you. And audience opportunity to address the board. Is there anyone that would like to address the board? No. All right. So that brings us to adjournment. And um, is there a motion to adjourn? So moved. Second. All right. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? The Wayzata Public Schools Board of Education regular meeting for February 12, 2018 is adjourned.